This week, what you guys saw was uh, Leg Lock Tuesday, and uh, a little recap of Leg Lock Tuesday, oh, more of a recap as to why I do Leg Locks. So I come from a gym that's predominantly filled with bigger guys, um, starting off early in my Jiu-Jitsu career. I, I usually am the smallest guy in the room, um, to my advantage sometimes, and disadvantages, you have to look at the positive side of it. What I realized early on in my Jiu-Jitsu career was that I had to utilize uh, what John Danaher got from Dean Lister where you, you know, don't ignore, why would you ignore 50% of the body? Well, I'm not a strong guy. I'm strong for my size, but I'm not strong when I'm going against, you know, plus 200 pound guys. So I learned that I utilized their 50% of the body, the lower half of their body, which is their legs. I learned that uh, being able to utilize leg locks, I don't have to rely on strength as much. Um, Yes, they have big, strong legs, but that's not going to stop my entire upper half of the body. Um, so I learned to utilize the legs and learn to establish positions and then obtain the submissions correctly. Because no matter what, leg locks, if they're utilized incorrectly, they're not going to be successful. They really aren't. It doesn't matter what fancy flip you do or what MNRA roll you do, it's not going to, it's not going to work. Stay right there, stay right there. Forgot my place. But, stay. Uh, what were we talking about? Utilizing 50% of the body, leg locks. Them not working, establishing them. But anyways, a lot of the questions, a big question, oh my God, guy, what are you doing? You want them cuddles, you want the cuddles? Go on. Inside, go. Go. I'll get you later, guy. Go inside. Inside. So big question we get a lot is uh Two. Go. <laughs> so one of the big questions we get a we hear a lot in jujitsu is do leg locks really work or that leg locks don't actually work? Well, they do. 
just like any other submission, you know, Kimura works if established properly. Leg locks, heel hooks, ankle locks, knee bars will work if established properly. If done improperly with not improper technique, you're gonna fail. That's why you see a lot of people getting their backs taken. That's why you see actually Gordon Ryan had that happen to him. He had his back taken by Felipe Pena. He learned from that, established proper position next time, and then dominated the, the entire field. The, the Dan and Death Squad guys have proven time and time again that the leg locks do work. Um, Again, that's if you apply them properly. I believe leg locks work. They work for me. I have a lot to learn when it comes to leg locks. I'm I, I am nowhere near a leg lock specialist. I want to get there, and I believe that I will. But it's it's all a process. It's it's just the chess in jujitsu. But um, that was leg lock Tuesdays. We have it every Tuesday ever control uh, jujitsu. If you are not training leg locks as a jujitsu practitioner and you plan on competing in no gi tournaments that allow leg lock rules you're doing yourself a disservice. You need to properly establish either defense or offense on leg locks. I would advise defense more than offense because if you can fend it, you can, doesn't matter what happens. As long as you don't get a leg lock on you, you can learn to defend a leg lock and you should be okay in no gi. But you won't be able to do that unless you learn how to properly apply a heel hook, ankle lock, knee bar, so on and so forth. And the earlier you learn them, the less injury prone you will be when you know what happens when you apply a heel hook. So that was Leg Lock Tuesdays. Again, every Tuesday. So if you're in the Melbourne area, you wanna learn some leg locks and they don't do much gym, come by. There's a lot of a lot of good uh, leg lockers and it's gonna be good work. So we'll catch you that and then tomorrow is Gi. So not as good in Gi, but I'm getting there. I got Oklahoma Open in two weeks and then we got Pans next month. So let's get it.
up here. Ah, oh, you did get you. Yeah. Oh, shit. You got me up. Do the hand drop. <laughs> Thank you, dog. So, end of the week with jujitsu, uh, jujitsu, duh, freaking end of the week with gi. Freaking idiot. End of the week with gi. How to describe gi? I, it's hard for me to describe gi still. It's it's the chest of jujitsu. The no gi is checkers until you know get to the advancement of leg locks, which we could discuss earlier. And then gi is checkers. You're you're adding grip. You're adding some solid foundation as someone with strong grip of forms. They're not gonna get out. Although I had the opportunity to display what the benefits of jiu-jitsu is. Uh, I felt pretty honored that I had that opportunity. Uh, again, I, I've, I'll say time and time again, I am the smallest one in the room. Um, I, don't, I really don't get the chance to display jiu-jitsu to newcomers because sometimes we get new guys that are my size or if we get a guy that's uh, bigger, he'll end up going with the bigger guys. I had, however, the opportunity to do that yesterday when we had Jacob come in who you saw definitely twice my size. He had a solid 100, almost just 50 pounds shy of 200 pounds on me. Above six foot, an incredible athlete. Plays football for FIT. He wanted to come in and try jujitsu and uh, give it a try for himself to see what the benefits are. It was funny too, because not, not against him, he had no clue what the sport was or what a, a, a purple belt in jujitsu means. He, I, I asked to roll with him and he, he questioned me, he said, you want to roll with me? I'm, I'm a big guy. And I was like, yeah, of course, I'm going to roll with you. I want to, I, 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 I want to roll with everyone I can. And we rolled, and he, he was a big dude. He didn't get to submit me. Uh, and then we rolled again, and I really got to show him what jujitsu is. Uh, I got the position over him. I did not let him crush me. And I showed that jujitsu is a dominant martial arts when it comes to someone you know who has no background in it. It's it's a dominant martial art when you're having someone with the same background. If you train more, you know. I got to show what jujitsu can do on the streets. This man had more weight than I do. He had more height, more weight. He had more strength. I got to show that in jujitsu, when it comes to self-defense aspect on the street, doesn't matter your size. It doesn't matter how strong you are. What matters is your technique, how you apply the technique in real life scenarios, and your athletic capabilities. Not saying I'm a better athlete than Jacob, I probably am not. I'm not a you know football player, I didn't grow up playing football, I just did jiu-jitsu. He, however, was was unable to get me. There's actually a point where he was trying to throw me over, which you know any strong guy would try and do, but you got to see that I was a small guy and he couldn't get me off of him. Uh, I was able to submit him, obviously, and him, him being a white belt, that has nothing to do with anything like that. He has so much more to learn. It was just amazing to be able to show someone new the actual true capabilities of jiu-jitsu because if you went against a big guy, he's expected to get submitted. I mean, that happened, John, and I, this is jiu-jitsu. You're going to get submitted by bigger guys. But I felt pretty cool and honored that I was able to show him the capabilities of jiu-jitsu from a small guy perspective, show him small guy jiu-jitsu. And I'm kind of stoked that I get to show you guys that to show that more me, 160 pounds, I'm able to hold my own against and submit a 300-pound uh, guy with no background. So if you're ever thinking about doing jiu-jitsu, I want that to be kind of motivation to do it. Size doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how in shape you are. It doesn't matter how strong you are. Jiu-jitsu will get you to where you need to be. So again, I wanted to show you guys this to show you how jiu-jitsu is applicable and how it could benefit you in a confidence situation, a a self defense situation and it's it's proven. It, it will it will it will get you to the confidence you need to be to be able to protect yourself. Uh, so again thank you guys. A little more serious ending, but again ju 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 this is the shit man. Damn it. It's my fucking life and uh, sorry for the language. But it's it's awesome. I wanna be able to show you guys this. I was stoked I had the opportunity to Jacob joined the gym. He's gonna be a freaking stud. He, I'm scared because he's going to continue to train and train and train and then, you know, he's going to give me a, a shit show of a, of a freaking match because he's going to destroy me. Uh, probably not anytime soon, but, you know, he will move on and make it harder and harder for me to roll with him. And I love it. I love that we get to do that jujitsu. We get to suffer together, grow together, and watch each other learn. And we get to tap each other out and simulate murder with our homies. So that's my, that's my TED Talk.
Thank you guys. Uh, I'll catch you guys next week. All right. See ya.